Hello, everyone. I'm Shulpa Cannon, a member of the Fall 2020 NASA Capacity Building Program intern team. And I'm here to welcome you to our program and to provide a brief overview on topics such as some background behind NASA, what the applied sciences are, the goals of the Capacity Building Program, what programs lie within CBP, as well as which resources we will be using during our training. I first wanted to thank you all for joining us for these next two weeks. My goal for this specific module is to help provide some clarification on the overall training so that you have a better understanding of the training objectives, where the capacity building program fits within all of NASA's numerous programs, and so that you can be introduced to the tools we will be using in the following weeks. Next, we will be going into our introduction to the training. Through the duration of this training, our goal is to help you build an understanding of remote sensing data. Our aim is for you to understand what remote sensing data is, how it's used, and why it's relevant to learning about their environment. For those of you who have former experience in remote sensing data, we would like to support any prior knowledge and skills that you have. We will also supply information on Earth science and NASA careers for those of you who are interested in applying these skills in future opportunities. Providing insights into the applied sciences is also one of our objectives so that you can understand what the capacity building program is, the role it plays, and what other relevant organizations exist within CBP. Finally, we will help you in developing a foundation to conduct further learning on, so that all of the knowledge that you gain during these next few weeks will go beyond the length of the training program. Additional core concepts we would like to cover include learning how satellites are used to study the Earth, understanding how remote sensing data from satellites are used towards urban heat, urban flooding, and urban canopy research, learning more about today's environment in a historical and social context, and NASA's Earth observational data accessibility. Finally, some specific learning objectives that we would like to target include being able to define remote sensing and the role it plays in environmental reform, understanding how Earth observational data is in multiple geographies, and how to access and apply Earth observation data within local communities. Next, we will talk a little more about the applied sciences and the capacity building programs. NASA stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. When most people think of NASA, they picture moon landings, rocket ships, and astronauts. But there's a lot more to NASA outside of space technology and exploration, and many people don't know that NASA has used the vantage point of space to study the Earth since NASA began. NASA's mission is to discover and expand knowledge for the benefit of humanity. It began operations on October 1st, 1958, and to this day has 10 centers and 6 facilities around the country, with its headquarters in Washington, Washington D.C., as you can see on the map. All of us involved in this training are based out of Langley Research Center in southeastern Virginia, but we are all actually located all over the country because we are currently wo working remotely. NASA is composed of five mission directorates. This includes science, human exploration and operations, space technology, aeronautics research, and mission support. The Science Mission Directorate uses the vantage point of space to understand our planet, other planets, solar system bodies, the interplanetary environments, the sun and its effect on our solar system, and the universe beyond. It contains several divisions, such as the Earth Science Division, which I'll go further into later into the next slide. The Science Mission Directorate explores the answers to really big questions, such as, how does the universe work and what are its origin and destiny? How and why are the Earth's climate and the environment changing? And are we alone? Within the Science Mission Directorate, the Earth Science Division uses the vantage point of space to study the Earth and understand answers to fundamental science questions related to understanding our planet as a system. The division is split up into four programs, flight, technology, research, analysis, and applied sciences. The flight program develops, launches, and operates NASA's fleet of Earth-observing satellites, instruments, and aircrafts, as well as managing data systems to make data freely and openly available. The technology program tests and demonstrates scientific technologies for future satellites and airborne missions. 
The research and analysis program supports research that advances the knowledge of Earth as a system. Last but not least, the Applied Sciences harnesses Earth observations to find solutions to Earth's greatest challenges. The Applied Sciences is where the Capacity Building Program is located, and we will go more into detail in the following slides. The Applied Sciences Program supports innovative and practical uses of the Earth observations and scientific knowledge by private and public centers, sectors to inform their planning, decisions, and actions. It helps people all over the world use NASA's data to solve problems is made up of six programs, disasters, health and air quality, water resources, ecological forecasting, food security and agriculture, and finally, capacity building. Now, we will be going more into depth into the capacity building program, or CBP, within the Applied Sciences program. The ultimate purpose of the capacity building program is to empower people and communities by making earth datable Earth data as accessible as possible. This goal is achieved through methods such as workforce development, training activities, uh, collaborative projects, all to strengthen Earth observation knowledge and application. The program pursues these activities through RSET, Develop, and Surveyor programs, in addition to our Indigenous Peoples Pilot Project. Our aim is to ensure that anyone, ranging from students and early career professionals to working professionals and scientists, can access and apply Earth observation data. We also work with global networks like the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites, CIOS, and the Group on Earth Observations, GEOS, um, all to um, promote capacity building activities focused on user needs, in addition to professional societies that join along with us, like HEU. This infographic displays quantitative data on the kind of reach the capacity building program has been able to achieve during 2019. <clears throat> in 2019, over 14,000 individuals engaged with our program to tr our training and projects. These individuals were from nearly 5,000 different institutions and 158 countries. On the pie graph on the left, you can see the sectors these organizations fall within, with the biggest sector being academia which includes both faculty and students, and with the next three biggest sectors being federal government, private for-profit businesses, and nonprofits or NGOs. And if you're interested in learning more, the link to the 2019 annual report is at the bottom and also available on our website. Now, I will go more into detail about our elements. Our set, uh, or the Applied Remote Sensing Training Program, offers online and in-person trainings until during COVID-19, just the online trainings. RCET provides remote sensing training that builds the skills to learn how to use NASA Earth Science Data application models. Um, its target audience covers policymakers, non-governmental organizations, and other applied science professionals. However, all of these trainings are free and open for anyone to participate in, and all training material are, are <laughs> All training material are archived and available on our website. RSET offers live webinars that are thematically focused on topics like the remote sensing of urban heat islands or the remote sensing of flooding, and these are offered at varying levels of depth from our introductory levels to advanced. They also offer a self-paced remote sensing fundamentals training. Here, we have a curated list of RSET trainings that may be of interest to you. This is just a small subset of the training resources available on the website. One training that recently started was on urban heat islands, and another upcoming webinar is on NASA's Black Marble Night Lights data. Training covers thematic topics like flood disasters, water quality, air quality, land cover classification, and so much more that is also available on the website. As mentioned before, please, please feel free to have fun and explore these links afterwards. Next, we will go more into the workforce development side of CBP, DEVELOP. DEVELOP addresses environmental and public policy issues through feasibility research studies that apply satellite data to community concerns around the globe. DEVELOP partners with a broad range of organizations at a local scale to integrate freely available NASA Earth observations into their decision-making processes. 
These projects are just conducted in 10 week terms where programs focus on building the capacity to use Earth observations in its participants. Participants are students, recent graduates, early career professionals, and transitioning career professionals, really anyone over 18. These projects are conducted under the guidance of NASA, partner organization science advisors and mentors. Going more in depth into an individual developed study, one example is the Cambridge Urban Development Project. In this project, the goal was to quantify changes in urban albedo with NASA's Earth observations in order to help partners take action to reduce urban heat island effects in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Specifically, the team used MODIS data to calculate changes in albedo, and this information was used to map temperature hotspots to create an interactive ArcGIS dashboard. The study found that albedo increased slightly across the city and that the mean summer nighttime land surface temperature actually had a non-significant increase between 2003 and 2019. Above is a link to the developed website if you're interested, as well as other useful links to past projects, the interactive mapper, YouTube gallery, and GitHub repository if you're interested. Finally, if you're interested in becoming a part of the 2021 summer team, here's the application and term dates, in addition to a link for more details on the program. Finally, the last element of CBP is Servir, which uses the tagline of connecting space to village. Servir is a joint development initiative of NASA and USAID and works with region leading regional organizations across the world to help developing countries use the information provided by Earth's observing satellites and other geospatial tech in order to aid in managing climate change and land use. Servir empowers decision makers with tools, products, and services to act locally on climate sensitive issues such as disasters, agriculture, water, ecosystems, and land use. Using a service planning approach, Servir co-develops geospatial services, tools, data, and tra training resources. Two Servir resources I'd like to highlight are seen on the right. The service planning toolkit, which is a guide, sorry, I'll put it up right here, a guide for designing, delivering, and implementing services, and the SAR handbook, which shares methods for using synthetic aperture radar data for forest and biomass monitoring. Finally, on the image below, you can see five regions and 50 countries that Severe Service and the hubs are listed on the right. Finally, we will talk a little bit about GLOBE. Um, GLOBE provides grade level appropriate interdisciplinary activities and investigations about the atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and soil slash pedosphere. It connects students, teachers, scientists, and citizens from different parts of the world to conduct real, hands-on science about their local environments, and to put this all in a global perspective. Globe Observer is an international network of citizen scientists and scientists working together to learn more about our shared environments and changing climate. It is an open source platform that allows users in any field, whether you're in K-12, university, a PhD student, or researcher, to interact with GLOBE's preserved database that students, especially from grades of K through 12, have collected all over the world. Much of the data that's been collected is real-time data collections on the ground. What's amazing about this platform is that you can collect real-time data through GLOBE's mobile app and GLOBE's desktop feature. The program has translations in 11 languages, making scientific discoveries much more inclusive and diverse for a person of any background to participate in. Um, NASA's Earth <laughs> observations endeavors. Finally, we will go into NASA's EODIS ODIS worldview. NASA's ODIS provides the capability to interactively browse over 900 global full resolution satellite imagery layers and then download the underlying data. This supports time critical application areas such as wildfire management, air quality air quality measurements, and flood monitoring. You can even access this tool on a tablet or smartphone device, which is generally supported for mobile access to the imagery. We will learn to use this amazing program during our training, so feel free to explore the website as at worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov if you would like to explore and become more familiar with it in your free time. Finally, going over the key takeaways. 
By using satellites to gather remote sensing data, NASA is able to use the vantage point of space to study the Earth. NASA is composed of five mission directorates, science, human exploration and operations, space technology, aeronautics research, and mission support. The Applied Sciences Program, which is a part of the Earth Science Division within the Science Mission Directorate, supports in innovative and practical uses of Earth's operations. Uh, the Capacity Building Program, or CBP, within the Applied Sciences Program, focuses on making the Earth data as accessible as possible through our RCET, Develop, and Surveyor programs, in addition to our Indigenous Peoples Pilot Project. Globe Observer is an open source platform that allows users in any field, whether it's a student in K-12, a college slash university student, a PhD student, or researcher, to interact with Globe's preserved database. Finally, Worldview allows the users to gather information through satellite imagery and underlying remote sensing data to support time-critical application areas, such as wildfire management, air quality measurements, and flood monitoring. You might recognize this uh, image from the thumbnail of a video. You might be wondering, where in the world is this? Well, this image is an example of some Earth observation data that NASA collects. It was taken on October 22nd and shows the active fires and burn scars from recent fires in Colorado and California. Thank you so much and have a good day.